Hey guys, Salim Razai here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the UK Reboa study, which is Reboa and trauma patients with exsanguinating hemorrhage. So this was published in JAMA just this past year, Emergency Department Resuscitative Endovascular Balloon Occlusion of the Aorta in Trauma Patients with Exsanguinating Hemorrhage, the UK Reboa Randomized Clinical Trial. I have the PubMed ID number for you um, at the bottom of the slide screen in case you want to pull the paper for yourself. So the clinical question these authors were trying to answer was, in trauma patients greater than or equal to 16 years of age with life-threatening torso hemorrhage, does the use of Reboa plus standard care improve 90-day mortality versus standard care alone? So here's what they did. This was a multi-center, open-label, randomized clinical trial. Um, and Reboa was basically defined as inflation of the balloon in zone one, which is the descending aorta, or zone three, which is above the aortic bifurcation. And then standard care was all the things that kind of come along with that, intubation, blood product transfusion, tourniquet application, operative or endovascular hemorrhage control. So the two arms were Reboa plus standard care or just standard care alone. The primary outcome was 90-day mortality. Secondary outcomes of note were mortality at 24 hours, 6 hours, 3 hours, complications, and blood product use. They planned for 120 patients, but the trial got stopped early. 90 patients ended up getting randomized. Reboa plus standard care was 46 patients, and standard care alone was 44 patients. Baseline characteristics of the patients, blunt trauma was the majority of patients, 97%. 23%, almost one-fourth, had pre-hospital CPR. All patients included in this study were tachycardic and hypotensive in the pre-hospital setting. And Reboa plus uh, standard care had a lower median systolic blood pressure of 84 millimeters of mercury versus um, standard care alone, which was 99 millimeters of mercury. So there was some Baseline difference in terms of patients were a little bit more hypotensive in the Reboa arm than in the non-Reboa arm. So here's the treatment stuff that's important to know. So in the Reboa plus standard care group, only 19 patients of the 40-some that they had enrolled actually had balloon inflation. Eight patients had unsuccessful arterial access. Of the ones that got inflated, zone 1 inflation was 53%, zone 3 inflation was 47%, and the mean time from ED arrival to balloon inflation was about 32 minutes. So although these patients are getting randomized to Reboa plus standard care, over half of them never even had the Reboa used in treatment, and so we already have a biased baseline imbalance of more hypotensive patients but now we have over half the patients not getting what they were randomized to. The primary outcome of 90-day mortality, Reboa plus standard care was 54%, standard care alone was 42%. Now this was not statistically significant, but there was definitely a trend toward increased mortality with Reboa. And when we look at some of the key secondary outcomes, um, Reboa plus standard care, there was an increased odds of death across all time points. Death due to bleeding within 24 hours was higher with Reboa, 32% versus standard care of 17%. And time to definitive hemorrhage control was 19 minutes longer with Reboa. So this was really protracted treatment when you look at the study and you dive into the granular details. There was an extended pre-hospital transit time of median of 90 minutes. And so that makes me wonder, like, could we have maybe thought about deploying Reboa in the pre-hospital setting to produce earlier definitive hemorrhage control or slowing down bleeding at least? Because 90 minutes of bleeding is a long time of bleeding before you apply some device. The procedural intervention itself, it's important to know that like as a procedure, it's not like we're comparing one drug to placebo. We're comparing procedural proficiency and operator expertise, which is multiple steps, micro skills, in order for that to be successful. And when we look at this study, there were 17% of patients with unsuccessful arterial cannulation, and that's not even including the ones that did get arterial cannulation. They ended up not floating or uh, inflating the balloon. The sample size is a problem, so we get early stoppage. So 46 patients randomized to Reboa. 
only 19 patients underwent arterial access, catheter insertion, and balloon inflation. That's less than half the patients that they enrolled to that arm. And so trials that get stopped early overestimate potential effect or harm. And so I wonder if we're getting an overestimation of harm here in this study. May not be the case, but certainly something to think about from a methodological standpoint. So the clinical bottom line for me is Reboa plus standard care did not demonstrate a reduction in mortality at 90 days, but I would interpret these results with caution. 90 minutes of pre-hospital transport time, limited operator experience, smaller than anticipated sample size. Reboa is not going to be a one-size-fits-all solution, but I still think there could be a potential specific population or subset of trauma patients where this could be beneficial. So before we go throwing the baby out with the bathwater, although I'm happy we finally have a randomized clinical trial, I don't think this is the one that definitively tells us Reboa yay, Reboa nay. So let me know what your thoughts, comments, and questions are. Appreciate you guys tuning in. And until next time.